In this segment, we're going to create our first HTML5 based mobile app with the PhoneGap framework. This time, we're going to target Android. As you're probably aware, you can create multiple types of applications with the PhoneGap framework, but you've got to create one at a time. So this time, I've already downloaded our PhoneGap folder from the PhoneGap website. Here's the download button right here. Once you unzip it, you can see here in the libraries folder, I've got a folder for Android, folders for Bada, Blackberry, iOS, Windows Phone 7 and 8. So each one of these toolkits allows me to create applications for these platforms. Now in this course, we're going to focus on the two most popular platforms, Android and iOS. So to create our Android app, we first have to have our Android development environment ready. You can see here I'm at developer.android.com. And there's a button here called Get the SDK. Once you press that, you can download the SDK or software development kit and then follow the installation steps that are listed here on the website. They'll have you download Eclipse, a number of tools, and then individual versions of Android that you need to create your applications. I can warn you that this is going to take quite a while. It can take users up to four or five hours to get everything they need on a high-speed connection. So you're definitely going to want to set aside some time to do this. Once you've got your environment set up, you can load Eclipse, and in Eclipse, you're going to see these specific tools targeted towards Android users. So here we have kind of the Android, right there we can click that, the Android SDK Manager, which shows which versions of the Android SDK are downloaded on the, your particular machine. And then we've got the AVD Manager, which lets you manage your virtual Android devices. So once you've got all of that downloaded, you're just about ready to go. So what I recommend you do is back on the PhoneGap site, take a look at the docs and specifically the Getting Started Guide for Android. The Getting Started Guide for Android will first have you download Eclipse and the Android SDK and all that stuff I just talked about. So we're already up to step number three where we're going to start a new project. So it wants you to create a new terminal window and make sure that terminal window is pointed to the binaries directory of Android inside of the PhoneGap folder. So I'm going to hit the PWD command, which shows me where I'm currently located. I'm in users, there's my name, desktop, PhoneGap, libraries, Android, binaries. And inside this folder is the create application. The create application is used to create new projects. So following the instructions right here in number three, I'm going to create our project. So dot slash create, and then it wants the project folder path. That's where we want the project to end up, or the path to where our project is going to be stored. All right, so I'm going to use here users, my name, and desktop, and then we'll call the folder Android Hello. The next piece of information is the package name. Now the package name is fairly important. The package name is how your application is uniquely identified on the Android device. It's also how your application will be uniquely identified in the Play Store. So you want to make sure you do this correctly. Generally it's recommended you take your URL from your website and work backwards. So we're learntoprogram.tv, so our package name will be tv.learntoprogram, and then the application name for which we're using Android Hello. And then the final argument is the application name. So I'm just going to put Android Hello again. If you've done all that correctly, it's going to take just a moment and it's going to actually generate the project folder for your application. So here's the project folder that was generated on my desktop. And you can see here, if you're familiar with native Android development, it is a native Android project. We've got our source folder, we've got our Android manifest, we've got an assets folder, etc. So the next step is to actually bring this into Eclipse. Let me show you how to do that. We can get rid of our browser and we can get rid of our command line for now. 
So there's the folder here on my desktop. So here in Android, excuse me, here in Eclipse, I have nothing open. So I'm going to go to File, New, and I'm going to choose just Generic Project. Because from here, inside the Android folder, I've got Android Project from Existing Code. That existing code, of course, was generated by the Create command line application. So I'm going to click Next, and now it wants me to find where that existing code is. So that's, of course, going to be on my desktop. And there it is, the Android Hello folder. If I open that up, you should see it checked off, and it knows there's the package name and where it's located. So I don't have to do anything else here except click Finish. And in just a moment, my Android application will be generated. And you can see when I open it up here, I've got a number of folders that are part of the Android application. It takes just a moment for this to generate. And at this point, once it's generated, you may get an error. And that error is in the Android manifest.xml file. Let me show you how to fix that. You're going to go here to TV, Learn to Program, Android, etc. And on a Mac, you'll control click or you'll right click on a PC and you're going to choose properties. These are the properties for this particular project. Go to Android and here where it says project build target, choose your latest version of Android. We're going to choose Android 4.1.2. I'm going to click OK. And in a moment, when I go to project and clean, which kind of resets your project, you notice the error disappears. Now, without the error, we can actually compile our application as is. So I'm going to get it compiling, and in the meantime, while it's compiling, I'm going to take you on a tour of what we have here inside the project. So to compile it, first of all, we need a virtual device on which we can compile it. Now, the directions within the PhoneGap site give you some advice on how exactly to do this. I have a number of test devices here. I'm actually going to use the one called Intel. Now, if I wanted to create a new one, I could click New, give it a name. So I'll call this Intel 2. A target, and that's going to be the same API level I chose before, level 16, Android 4.1.2. For the CPU, I'm going to choose Intel. SD card, don't choose something too big, we'll just go with 32. And here we can make some choices as far as how our device looks. We can choose things like size, etc. I'm going to choose WQVGA 400, and we're going to leave the hardware choices alone, create the AVD. That creates the Android virtual device. Now the easiest way to run it is to hold control or right click on the project and choose run as Android application. You also can use debug configurations up here and create a debug configuration for your application. So our application is right there under project. I browsed for it and then the target is what device do I want to run from. I'm going to always prompt to pick a device so it'll allow me to choose the AVD or even an Android device I have plugged in. And I'm going to call this my Android Hello configuration. All right, so now that I've got that, I'm going to click Debug. It's going to start launching. Now, the first time you launch, it takes a few minutes to load the device, especially on slower machines. So you've got to be aware of that. And I'll go ahead and load on the Intel 2 device I just created. Now, while that's loading, let's take a look at the folders we have here. Now, the most important folder for you, as someone who's going to be creating HTML5 based Android applications, is this www folder. And you can see inside the www folder, I have an index file, which I'm going to control click or right click on the PC and choose open with text editor, otherwise it opens in a little mini web browser. And you can see here, we have HTML5 code that's used to create the sample application. The sample application you'll see running in just a second. We also have some JavaScript, a master CSS, and we have folders for CSS images, JavaScript, etc. So we have a little organizational system here. 
we actually could take all of this out, except for the Cordova-2.2.0 JavaScript. That's the JavaScript side of Cordova or PhoneGap. By the way, the two names are used interchangeably. That's the JavaScript needed to run the PhoneGap framework. So we always want to leave that in there. And the index file is the one that's loaded first. Now, just if you're curious, if I go here to the source and we look at the actual Java, which you never have to touch as a PhoneGap developer, that index is being loaded right here in the super load URL method. Now again, only if you were interested, you don't have to know anything about the Java to make PhoneGap work. So I'll close that up. And let's take a look here at another important part of this, and that's the manifest. And I'm going to look at the manifest XML. XML is pretty easy because it's, it's fairly self-documenting. So first thing you'll notice is here we have the screen sizes that are supported. Now you can change that if you need to um, not support one of these screen sizes for some reason. And down here you'll notice we have all of these Android permissions. These are permissions to access different parts of the Android hardware, for example the camera or the internet or to receive SMS messages. I highly recommend that before you put your application into production, before your application is finished and released to the public, you take out the ones of these you don't need. For example, read and write contacts. You don't need it, take it out. The reason I recommend that is that oftentimes users are hesitant to install applications that seem to use permissions that they don't understand why they're needed. So you can take those out if they're not needed. The rest of this basically tells the Android device how to load the application and also gives important information about your application to the Google Play Store. All right, at this point our emulator is loaded and you can see it's actually loaded our application. Our application just simply displays this Apache Cordova device is ready. So that's the, that's the stock application that uh, gets set up automatically when you create an Apache Cordova or PhoneGap application. So we know that's running well. Now a note on the emulator. The emulator is designed to emulate a real phone. We could go here into the web browser. Notice we went to Google. We could go to, we could look something up here on Google. Here's the on-screen keyboard. And this is working just as a real device would. You can go back here go to the home screen rather. We can look at the applications that are on here. For example, there's a calendar. There's our Android Hello application that we just created. The gallery. So everything that's on a regular Android device, you're pretty much going to find on here. It is an emulator. It's emulating a real Android device. So let's go ahead and just make a couple of changes to the stock application here just so you can kind of see how it's done. So I'm going to go here into my assets and here in www we're basically just going to change this index. I'm going to take out this big comment right here. Don't need that. And here we've got some meta tags. This viewport is basically dealing with the different size screens. Say initially we have a scale of one, meaning 100%, minimum scale 1%. The width is going to be the device width. The height is going to be the device height. So we probably want to leave that in here. We don't need the style sheet for right now, especially the style sheet that's provided here. So I'm going to take that out. And I'm also going to take out the index CSS that it referenced. So let me go ahead and here in the CSS folder, there was this index CSS. We don't need that anymore. So we're going to take it out. And there we go, that's gone. I'm gonna take out all of the content here in the body just about. So here we have a div class app and a div called device ready class blank. I'm gonna take all of this out and we're just gonna look at the scripts that are in here. So first you've got the Cordova. That's the one you want to keep. And I'm actually going to take out these as well. 
And I prefer to have this script in the head. So I'm going to move that right here. All right, so now I've made some pretty large changes to this index. I'm just going to make one more change, which I'm going to say here in an H1. Oops, have my caps lock on, H1. Hello, Android. And then we'll put underneath it an H2 from Learn to Program. All right, so now we have, I guess, basically a customized application. It just outputs text. But we can also, if we wanted to, get rid of this main GS because we're not using any of these. So we'll go ahead and delete those as well. All right, so now we've got a much simpler application. We're not using this index.js, so I'm going to get rid of that. So now we have a much simpler application that just outputs these two elements, but it's one we've run ourselves. All right, so let's go ahead and again use our Android Hello Debug configuration. We're going to choose the running emulator, and let's pop that back up here. And in a moment, you'll see our application will start. And there's exactly what we told the application to do. Display Hello Android from Learn to Program. So you can see it's fairly easy to set up an application using the PhoneGap framework for Android. And in this segment, we set up and basically created our own Android application using HTML5 and the PhoneGap framework.